Let me show you how you can use AI to go from this shot to this, or this. You can use AI to get a tight, a medium, a wide, and an ultra wide shot all from one camera and gain quality and resolution at the same time. By the way, this isn't actually what my office looks like, if that wasn't clear. I'm gonna show you guys how to expand your environment and even set decorate using AI in post with generative fill in Photoshop and some of the best practices to get it done. This is actually pretty crazy because you can make a really boring plain shot into something much more interesting in seconds with no extra money. So all I'm doing here is filming some A-roll like I normally do and then I'm taking a screen grab from my footage and bring that into Photoshop. And if you haven't heard, there's this new tool in Photoshop called Generative Fill. And basically you can just choose anywhere you want and get it to fill that with either a prompt or you can remove things or just let AI expand your environment for you. It'll give you a few different options. You can choose one and then you can just keep working from there and keep expanding. So what I did, I first expanded the canvas and then bit by bit, I just started to build out the sides of my frame until I had this really nice wide shot. And to me, this is super interesting because I just filmed this like normal medium shot, but now I, I can zoom in a little bit because it's 4K, but also I can zoom out using generative fill and kind of fill in my office and just make a cool scene. And interestingly, now your footage has gone from 4K to something like 8K or maybe even bigger, depending how, how big you make your canvas. And basically you're just concentrating your resolution around what's most important, which would be me in this case and kind of the surrounding area here. And then when you scale it down, you're just getting like a really, really high quality image. You could even film vertical like this. So you're using all of the resolution for the parts that really matter and then just make up the rest. And you can also set decorate in here. You can add a light or a plant or a window to motivate your light. Right now it's not really being motivated, but you got a window over there, you're motivating your light. Super fast, very easy. It doesn't always get it right, that's for sure. You gotta have some patience, but man, this is really powerful. Export your creation, bring it back into your editing program, and then match the two, feather it out a little bit if you need to. And then your AI set is ready and you can zoom in and out as you please. I also use this with thumbnails all the time. Sometimes I just need a little bit of extra space on the corners or I'm moving things around. I just need to expand something or add to something. And this works really well, especially with some like thumbnails where you're not really paying attention to the background so much. It doesn't matter if it's not absolutely perfect. AI is, is a really powerful tool, but it kind of feels like we're in the stages of like we discovered fire and now we're trying to figure out what to do with that fire. And the way I'm thinking about it is there's a bunch of tools being built right now, but not all of those tools are useful. A lot of them are just kind of gimmicky or pointless in a way. But then some tools can be really, really advantageous to use. For example, with Artlist, uh, all the music in this video is from Artlist. I use their music all the time. They have a massive, really high quality catalog, but they also have stock footage. And looking through stock footage can be very tedious and very painful. So what they're doing is they're using AI so you can more plainly describe what you want, like a mood or feel or get specific. So with AI, you find what you're looking for way faster or maybe even something that you weren't looking for, but that's way better for your project. And even better, now they give you sound effects suggestions for that video clip. So we always need sound effects and so they basically just did your work for you and you can download the video clip and then download the sound effects and you're ready to go. I'm really glad that Artlist is using AI to make things even faster and easier for us to tell our stories and to make our films. And right now, you can get two free months off with the link down below. Thank you so much, Artlist, for sponsoring this video. Just like with Artlist and them using AI, I feel like generative fill is a real world, real use case for AI that can completely change the way we think about our filmmaking. Expand your environment, expand your set, set decorate. Just imagine, you know, you have to do like a talking head video, but you don't have a good location. 
Well, you can just kind of light it really nice and make sure whatever is behind them kind of looks cool and then just fill in the environment afterwards. And that could also really work, you know, if your client's like, well, I didn't actually really like that location. Well, you can just change it in just a few seconds. I really think we're getting to the point now where these AI tools are interacting with the things that we're already doing. And that's when it's really gonna start getting crazy for us creatives. For example, imagine like a, a YouTube channel that takes place in a super futuristic office and place because you can just make these crazy worlds using mid journey and just kind of expand out your environment. Unfortunately, mid journey doesn't work like that and generative fill doesn't always work. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to do this really well. First off, it works a lot easier with a static shot. Yeah, you could have a little bit of movement and then track it afterwards. But I I'm finding that with a static shot, it's a lot easier to build out the world and it's just makes the whole process much much simpler. I would start with static shots for sure. And then you want to think about kind of your cut point between the real world and then your AI extension. For example, here we have the table, which serves as a perfect kind of like cut point because my legs aren't showing and you would obviously run into a bunch of trouble with expanding out the environment and then having my legs not be there. And so you can think, you know, you want to make a little like post apocalyptic clip. Well, you just kind of need some like concrete around you and then just expand the rest. So just whatever is kind of near or around your main subject. Think about those kind of cut points. And how I find this works best is going kind of bit by bit. Don't take too big of a chunk. Just build out kind of like sliver by sliver and then you can kind of modify afterwards, take away things, add things. But I really find that if you try to, to kind of like give it a big chunk, it just gets <laughs> stupid really fast. And remember, you can get rid of something or add something. For example, if your prompt overall worked really well, but then there's like a little thing that's like, what the heck is that? You can just select that and get rid of it. And then make sure you're experimenting with the prompts. A lot of the times I kind of just choose it and then I let it expand for itself, especially if I'm just trying to create a realistic kind of extension of my set. I'm not that good at the prompts yet, but you can do some really interesting stuff and it just helps to kind of give you some different options. It might not be good, it might be really bad, but you might have a cool idea and then you can kind of go from there. You can always delete and then start over. An interesting thing you wanna think about is the light. So for example, I have a light over here. And so if I'm gonna add a window or a light to my scene, I would want it on that side. Whereas if I just added a window on that side, it would just, it would feel so off because there's no light coming from over there. So you kind of wanna play the real world and your AI. I, I, how did I get to this place where I'm talking about making AI backgrounds? <laughs> this is really what I've been looking looking for AI tools that actually interact with what we're doing and not doesn't just feel like, you know, like a bit of like a party trick that that it's cool. It does really cool things, but it doesn't actually affect my day to day workflow as a filmmaker, whereas this this could be something. But yeah, try it out. I wanna see what you guys do. So tag me on Instagram or Twitter or wherever. I wanna see what you guys are making because I'm just trying to learn just like everyone else is. But this, I feel like, is something that could be very interesting for you guys and could really elevate your productions when you don't have much. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye. I had to turn off the AC so you're not hearing the fans. And man, it is hot. <laughs> really hot. All right, bye.